Hello, Malcolm Laird here. Um, I've been asked to do a more in-depth uh, review of the book Pacific Corsair about the uh, F4U1 in New Zealand service. So here it is. Um, this photograph in front of you is a colourised black and white photograph from the Royal New Zealand Air Force's archives. And uh, when I colourise a picture, I try to leave clues that it is not like faking being truly coloured. If you look at the background with the F4Us, you'll see they're not really coloured all that well. I've not coloured the engine bay and I've not coloured the cockpit. Um, the idea being to create a, uh, an impression but not try and uh, you know tell a lie. Anyway, um, the first couple of slides after this one uh, will be some colour profiles from the book and then there'll be uh, another photograph where I just want to touch on uh, the roundels before we'll go on to just turning the pages of the book. Uh, here are two colour side views from the book and uh, one is of one of the raging Donald Duck uh, planes, it's NZ5262 and it's in the, uh, the standard three colour US Navy scheme but the uh, forward cowling appears to have been uh, placed on this aircraft from a different plane. And the second one is an aircraft with the name Phyllis painted on the side. This is from uh, from number 23, the Ghost Squadron. This appears to be in one of the RNZAF's repaint schemes. In this photo from the book, Corsairs are being maintained by one of the servicing units. I want to withdraw your attention to the underwing roundel and bar on the aircraft in the middle uh, of the photo. Notice how roughly applied it is. Also the bars, they're not really in proportion and they too appear to be hand painted. On the next slide, I start turning the pages of the book and please be prepared for the volume to drop down as I don't have uh, software able to increase the volume. Sorry about this. So uh, just get ready to uh, increase your volume. Okay, I'm just going to uh, turn the pages of the Pacific Corsair book and uh, from time to time I'll talk about something. We start off with the Pacific War situation, then it's development of the Corsair, and then we're into um, the parts about the New Zealand usage of the, of the aircraft. A couple of other types, or three other types, operated by the RNZAF P-40s, the Hudson, and the Ventura. Quite a number of New Zealanders flew in the fleet air arm on Corsairs, uh, although that's not specifically covered in this book. It does get touched on. Uh, indeed, um, when the, um, the British fleet gathered off the coast of Japan to, um, uh, to do their bit beside the Americans, um, in uh, late 1945, well, <clears throat> sorry, well, mid-1945, I suppose, uh, around a quarter of the single-seat fighter pilots on Royal Navy uh, aircraft carriers were New Zealanders. There's some of our Kiwis in the Royal Navy. Yeah, post-war, some more Royal Navy Corsairs. This is up, this is up beside the uh, story of the development of the Corsair. Now we're into the part about New Zealand usage. Um, at several stages throughout the book, the author, Robert Montgomery, uh, lists the disposition of the various aircraft through the various squadrons, uh, servicing units, and training units. It covers off the various bases we used, uh, the various islands in the Pacific, on which uh, squadrons and servicing units operated. There's quite a bit of artwork in the book and um, Ventura have done decals of uh, some of the aircraft illustrated. Uh, we've done uh, this aircraft Yellow 16, Tutaifira, uh, which literally translates as hot shit. So it's like a positive uh, admonishment uh, in the Maori language. Down the bottom on the left, there's a uh, PBY. We've done decals for that aircraft in, um, in 48th and 72nd scale. 
and of course um, these are aircraft from uh, from the so-called ghost squadron not because they were the ghost squadron but um, they had the emblem of a ghost uh, on the port side of their aircraft again this is about uh, the various squadrons converting to the Corsair training on um, uh, P-40s and then moving on to Corsairs. That's how it was done initially anyway. Yeah, on this page there's one of the Donald Duck Corsairs. Um, I've often wondered if there was one guy who really liked paint, painting cartoons of Donald Duck or if it happened um, back at the factory where the aircraft were manufactured. But uh, of the various uh, Donald Duck Corsairs, we've done decals of four of them in 72nd and 48th scale, and two in 32nd scale. And since doing the decal sheets, uh, it's come to my knowledge that there are at least two more for a total of six Donald Duck Corsairs. So yeah, I mean, history, it's a living subject. The servicing units. Um, I th understand that the, uh, the United States Army Air Forces uh, had a similar idea in the Pacific whereby the um, the servicing was kind of separated uh, from the actual pilots and their squadrons to some extent because of course the um, the servicing personnel were not in the line of fire uh, although they had a pretty arduous job as well. Yep, here's one of the disposition of Corsair pages where they were, servicing units, bases in New Zealand, so on and so forth. Operations, some of their operations, um, the, I'm in a fighter-bomber role with um, the Australians operating uh, boomerangs as uh, gun spotters. Oh. More Donald Duck Corsairs, this one here is number 77. Now, all the Donald Duck Corsairs that I've discovered, they're all in the serial range of NZ-52 something something. And this is a NZ-5277. Nz Story is continuing on. Another Ghost Squadron aircraft. This is quite a famous one, known as Kohimarama 9. Kohimarama is a suburb of Auckland. I've seen um, a photograph of nose art, I think it's Kohimarama 7, uh, on a P-40. But uh, it was only a photograph of the nose art close up, so you didn't get an idea of which aircraft that P-40 actually was. More Ghost Squadron planes. Here's an interesting thing. This particular photograph here, um, it's hard to get in a clear impression of what shade the blue on the Corsairs uh, were. But generally speaking, uh, it would have been the sort of medium to dark blue. Although sometimes, like on Kohimarama 9, um, when we did decals of that, we made the blue dark because I found orthochromatic photographs of that plane where the yellow displays as dark, and of course in orthochromatic film, the blues display light, yet the blues were still quite, were still dark. So uh, we made the, uh, made the judgment call that Kohimarama 9 had dark blue markings. Uh, yeah, there's a chapter on uh, write-offs where planes were pranged and damaged. Interesting commentary here. This aircraft here is um, a uh, uh, parts from two crashed planes or damaged planes joined together. But after doing all the work of making this flyable plane, um, the ground crew, um, they checked the number of hours they'd spent doing the job compared with the result of getting the aircraft up and running. And uh, it was, wasn't really worth the effort. And uh, from memory, I think the aircraft maybe flew once and then was parked up after that as uh, just, you know, the idea of splicing up the plane. It just didn't work out all that well, although it did fly. More listings of um, aircraft that had prangs and crashes. And now we're on to the pilot training. So, yeah, these are the various... Um, various unit codes uh, for the training organization back in New Zealand. So, you know, JZ is a P-40, 
being used as a trainer as well. Up on its nose. And getting a little bit too close for comfort. And here we are. A, uh, a training wing of pilots, number 23 squadron. That's the squadron nicknamed the Ghost Squadron. In this picture, you can see they've actually got a little, um, uh, you know, sort of a made up little mascot of uh, the Ghost. Apparently, as the pilots were doing their training, nearby residents would see their Corsairs landing. And because the, they were, the residents down below were looking up at the plane, so often they couldn't see the pilot. So the joke, local joke was that, oh, they must be flown by ghosts. And here's a photograph of a uh, T6 Texan or Harvard um, with the JZ code of one of the training organisations. Again, more training planes. Oh, and the famous aircraft Corsair with Corsair on it. Um, this was a plane painted up for like a promotional tour for the uh, New Zealand equivalent of a war bonds tour. So that was quite interesting. But after the job was done, it's put back into service with uh, the training organization. Another list of dispositions of Corsairs in New Zealand at that time. And planes up on their noses. Oh, I love this photograph. Corsairs on the deck at Ardmore. They're into the post-war period, land of the setting sun. Um, New Zealand took part in the, uh, the occupation forces on the islands of Japan. I think we were there for maybe two years, there or thereabouts. Again, list of aircraft, stories about what happened. <laughs> and I just had this information about a captured zero. Uh, which, yeah, it's flown into Piva on Bougainville. And this aircraft is now in the, uh, the Auckland War Memorial Museum. Again, more accurate information about dispositions of aircraft, where they were, who was using them, and how many. This kind of stuff can disappear into, uh, disappear into the Never Never, Never Never lands. And then post-war aircraft being disposed of, decommissioned, and here's in the end one of the Donald Duck Corsairs. I've noted two versions of the Donald Duck artwork, um, so um, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting uh, interesting thing. There's probably one guy who did it, and here we are. This is number fourteen squadron heading off to Japan. I've got significant content for that chapter from Peter Mossong, whose father was a ground crewman with Number 14 Squadron in Japan. This is the aircraft that Len Mossong serviced. It was named Werner. Uh, one or two planes we painted on... Um, RAF style, you know, C type roundels, no particular reason, maybe just to look like the others or something, who knows. Uh, one thing to note is in these photographs where you see an apparent very light surround where the old roundel and bar has painted, paint, been painted over, that is generally to do with the different glosses and angle of the camera uh, and that the the roundels, sorry, the bars on the roundels were painted over with dark blue paint. But it's just the way the sun is catching it. And uh, yeah, so don't be fooled into thinking that is a, uh, a medium or light blue paint over the old bar. It's a dark blue, it's just catching the sun differently. So I've seen photographs of the same aircraft uh, in different photographs whereby the perception is light bars on one occasion and dark on another. So the blue here, the blue in these roundels, this would be that medium, that medium blue that we used, not the uh, later so-called bright 
or the so-called um, round dill blue that we would have used in the 70s and 80s. Again, into the junkyard being scrapped, and there we've got some quite good appendices of colours, paint manufacturers, and colour scheme notes. And uh, yep, we have uh, some commentary by David Duxbury about colour scheme. And then we have um, some notes about the authors, the main author, Robert Montgomery. He has quite a life, Robert. Um, he always had difficulty with his eyes, but as a young man in the 1950s, he took personal notes of aircraft flying through where he lived uh, and travelled to air shows with his parents in different parts of the countries and took methodical notes, even as a, uh, as a teenager. And there's, there's also notes uh, are written by David Duxbury about himself, and uh, David still is doing ongoing research um, about New Zealand aviation and the Second World War. So, you know, both authors, great guys. And there we are, closing off. Well, they keep on coming. Uh, this is the fifth Donald, and uh, this photograph is uh, from the RNZAF Museum. It is NZ5251. Note also the right smack in the center of the picture, you can see NZ, not quite sure what it is, NZ something something 96. Notice the fuselage roundel and bar, where the actual blue of the roundel at least appears to be darker than other aircraft, could be just fresh paint, and the yellow rings around the bars do not fully cross the blue of the bars. This is the end of my presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it and learned some more about the book Pacific Corsair and some of its uh, some of its content. If you are interested in purchasing a copy, it's listed at VenturaPublications.com in US dollars. It's on eBay in US dollars and it's listed on TradeMe.co.nz in New Zealand dollars. Thanks for watching.